And welcome back to the Dodgeball World Championships here in Graz, Austria. Terry Thrasher is here with a special guest, Alex Young. <laughs> welcome to the microphone. Thank you, thank you. First time commentator here, but uh, yeah. I'm excited. But not your first time being at Worlds, obviously. You've, no, uh, you've done this no. a few times. Yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you the youngest player on Team Australia a couple of Worlds ago? Uh, I was the youngest player for about five years. Right. <laughs> I think uh, Edmonton was the, the first time that the, that crown got taken away. From Somebody. Me, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to have you here, and uh, you've had a lot of experience down on the court so far. You were saying before the match, it's uh, it's pretty warm, as as we've mentioned, but yes, uh, not not used to playing in this heat back home. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of an adjustment, but uh, yeah, we've. We've sort of we've sorted an esky full of ice for us to just <laughs> cool down, um, which has been really great today. So you may have to tell me what an esky is. Oh, uh, I know in New Zealand they call it a chili bin, okay. or like a, a cooler. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what we'd call a cooler. Yeah, uh. <laughs> interesting. I was saying earlier that Australian slang is often just more different to us in North America than any other English-speaking slang. So. Nine times out of ten, it's just the word shortened. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, true. Well, and how much have you seen um, any either of these teams play? I know we had Sweden at in at the Edmonton. foam division in Edmonton yeah. in 2022, but I think this is the first time a lot of us are seeing Switzerland play. Yes, I'm actually really excited. So um, I really like seeing, seeing new teams come because I feel like... Uh, they come in with a very different perspective and they kind of, it's sort of nice to see someone who hasn't been at the Worlds before and just how they approach the game and how they make their calls, how they position themselves on the court. Because, um, yeah, I think sometimes we definitely draw inspiration or like, we'll go, oh, they were doing this, we didn't think to do that because we've just always done it one way. So yep. it's nice for, for someone to, teams to come in with sort of like a fresh perspective. Yeah. It's really interesting. And I know sometimes, you know, in these places where there's a much stronger cloth tradition, their foam scene might not be as well developed. So I feel like we still see some of that cloth style decision making from yes. players who are clearly more used to it, especially if they put the ball down on the ground when they yes, leave the court. Yes, it's the telltale sign. Yep. <laughs> um, sometimes the throw motion, too. I feel like there's more whip in the arm for a lot of foam experience yeah. throwers and less whip from the cloth experience Yeah, it's a throwers. little bit more of a, a push, yeah. I would find. Um, because you have a fair bit of cloth experience too, don't you? I do, actually. Yeah. Uh, I started as a cloth player back <laughs> in uh, 2016. So. Yeah. And so you can tell me now which which format you prefer better. Uh, I prefer foam. Okay. Uh, okay. Personally, I, I just find the balls easier to throw, and I feel like I can uh, get into the game a little bit more. And yeah, it's a bit more chaotic. I, I also feel like the rules lend themselves to allow a bit more uh, strategy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just find that really fun. Yeah, it's definitely a different emphasis. Cloth emphasizes more the pace of play Correct. and that moment-to-moment -moment decision making. And here in foam, we'll see if it's a slow match. I love seeing the different rush plays also. Um, yes. Yeah. I think a lot of the more experienced countries have started experimenting even more with their rushes. Correct. We have two, actually. Yeah. I think the Canadian women have been one of the most experimental teams that I've seen in past uh, nationals. Or, sorry, agree. worlds tournaments. Yeah, I would definitely and agree. I feel like every year they, they bring in something yeah. they, something new, so I'm looking forward to what they have this year. <laughs> and now these teams okay, we'll get some close calls. As a uh, larger male player myself, I like seeing how some of the some of the men out there try to get away from shots coming in because obviously so many of the throws at this level are so good mm -hmm. that you have to really be able to make big movements to get out of the way a lot of the time. And, uh, a guessing game you've just got to move and hope you've picked the right direction yep make make it so that they don't guess the right way hopefully and we saw a nice big jump by anderson sorry johansson in the corner and then letting go from the back line previously ooh, Great yeah. shot then. jonsby had been taking a lot of those preemptive throws from sweden when we'd seen him in the past so not surprised he did that there but he did get punished for it Switzerland regroups to the line they come, and it's a shot toward the middle. I feel like 
it's probably not a factor for them yet in this match, but it's been hard to keep the grip on the ball really solid as the match has gone on with yes. the sweat being the factor that it is. <laughs> Correct, yes. Some otherwise formidable throwers. We see some slips, spikes. Okay, good dodging from our force. I'm really liking the, the timing of uh, the set throws from Switzerland. Uh, lots of faking, disguising who's releasing the ball. Ball control's really tight too. Yep. Nice solid throw by Ladiston on the mark. And another. Look at that, right on the right on the thigh a couple of times. Those players, I thought, were turning away from the ball a little bit too, so maybe. Ooh, another. Look at that great, spot. Great, great shot. Johansson. Just breaking up the rhythm a little bit. Yep. And that's one of the tricky things, right? Throwing a little bit to break up that rhythm without dumping the balls away too much. Momentum is such an important thing in dodgeball, so um, it's really important like when the other team's starting to, to find their groove just to give them something different to think about. Yeah, so now Arfors was the target. Switzerland's going to get a chance to set up again. Sweden so far wisely hanging on to three balls on defense. This is always interesting to me too when, when there's a team with fewer players, especially when they've got two. They probably will only throw one ball unless they see a really high quality opportunity. And being able to keep two on defense does open up the possibility for that corner to maybe take a preemptive shot or an immediate reactive shot. Exactly. Or give them the option to set up again and, and work out a play. It's really tempting like when you've got four balls and there's two players left to throw two. Uh, but it's just thinking about then that's just another ball that they can throw back at you. And obviously survivability is the number one thing when you're down players. Yep. And that's, I do find that's a difficult hump for some players who are really confident in their, in their throw to get over is the in the moment that decision might have worked out or not, but the There's consequences. Always a consequence, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next 30 seconds, if they lead to you and your teammates being shelled by the other team just having ball control, exactly. it it's, doesn't it feel great. Sometimes it's a risk you need to take, like if you um, yeah. great catch there. Yeah, very solid. But yes, as you were saying, sometimes it is a risk very much worth taking. Okay, a bit off the mark there. I like that, swatting the ball away on the block. Make sure it stays on your side at least. Okay, good shots on the money. Switzerland getting a pretty strong point here. And we, we were talking yesterday about, there's the saying, catches win matches, but it's such a high risk, high reward thing to, to do. So do you think it's worth focusing on trying to emphasize catches? Uh, I think you're talking to the wrong person. As someone who loves to catch, I'll always say yes. <laughs> but I think the correct answer is uh, no, it's not always the, the priority. So for you it's yes, but maybe overall <laughs> maybe it's not always the, the thing to emphasize. I exactly. I think um, as well, it's just about for each individual knowing what your strengths are and like what your win condition is. Yes. Um, and just kind of utilizing that as best as you can to provide as much value for your team as you can. Okay, another nice spot. See the one for one. You really can't tell that it's Switzerland's first uh, time around at Worlds for, for foam. Yeah, I think they're, yeah, they're playing they're, really well. You're seeing good coordination, like you were saying before, they're staggering and mixing up the timing a bit. Uh, yeah, I think their throws have been pretty solid. And that their teamwork has been, has been great. Yeah, I'm liking it so far because as you, you're kind of alluding to, we have seen some teams where it's their first time in Worlds struggle to adjust to some of the pace and the tactics of the team, the, the veteran teams that they're playing against. Uh, but yeah, Switzerland so far looking pretty solid. Also, it's just something really small as well. Like after each sort of play, you can sort of see small conversations happening between players on the court, just making small adjustments as the set goes on. Um, just communicating things that they're seeing, potential opportunities maybe. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about, but it's good to see like those little chats happening. Yeah, that kind of communication can be a major part of those adjustments midpoint. It can help save outs or get outs for your team. Jansby makes the play call. Ooh, just blocking that shot. Preemptive attempt. It's R-Force who sends that into the middle. 
Gustav Arfors, who is allegedly the oldest and wisest of triplets. That is sourced directly from his bio in 2022, so take that for what it's <laughs> worth if, if you're uh, you don't listening. don't well to remember that. <laughs> I may have that document open somewhere else. <laughs> oh, some good shots from both teams, but it's just two Great Swiss players. Yeah, I like the quick timing on the counters. This time it was Lim throwing that out. Oh, right on the money, Arfur is whittling down the Swiss team to just one. doing a really good job of just uh, locking down his opposing wing and uh, yeah, really punishing him when they uh, decide to throw across. Yeah, that, that was, was three hits in a row for him, maybe? At least two. Yeah, um, yeah and, and well-timed, well-placed in each case. That is Augustine Lim throwing out those attacks. A little bit of conversation with the officials here. Not sure what the conversation is, but it doesn't look like it's going to take too long. And everybody backing off. It's always interesting. Sometimes the rushes are just this explosion of like four or five balls being thrown. Sometimes everybody's just like, I, I don't see one that I like. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to back yeah. off. Sweden probably slightly faster to the ball with the pass off. Um, probably would like to see uh, number four who's taking the shot just take that extra second. Uh, he's got a bit of time just to really make sure he gets a good shot off because it looked a little rushed and it's skied up a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. Lord Arfers back into the Swiss side. Okay. Oh, there's a, maybe a bit of a screen. But I like that throwing out. Slight bunching up of those Swiss players there. You kind of get two targets for the price of one throw. Exactly. Let's see if Switzerland is able to rebound and take away some of these Swedish numbers. Oh, great couldn't, counter. Couldn't quite find the grips on that one. So Josephy heads off. Okay, that's good. One for one. Lim traded off for Pelé. Or Pilette. You're going to have to find out how to say that properly. Jansby just able to choke up on the ball and get that block done. Arfur is now trying to call for things to be settled. They've got five balls. Oh, why not? Six, Six ball. <laughs> Potentially a bit of panic. Yeah, I mean, he was throwing toward a bunch, but I think it could have been a, a stronger attempt there. Yeah, probably a little bit too far back. But I know you don't want to lose the moment if you think you, you've got them yeah. all looking elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's still very early on in the game. If you're going to test things, uh, now's the time to do it. Yeah, and I, I like showing early on that you're willing to take those throws. Yes. Maybe the team thinks about that in the future when they're in that situation again. Ooh, what a well-placed ball right on the foot. Kanishi has to take a seat. To the line they go, they send two. Okay, they got Carlson. Johansson's gonna slide over to that corner. Oh, good block. And we'll see how many they send. I'm expecting just one again. Oh, but they do go with two. And a third. Okay, good dodging. Okay, I was, uh, it's always so risky. I like that Johansson went to keep that ball controlled in his side and he, he kept his eyes on. Especially when you've got the, the player advantage, sometimes it's good just to uh, almost pressure up and just see what happens. Maybe an opportunity is opened up for, for someone else to take a shot. Sometimes it can be really hard uh, when there's only two players left on the other side. Yeah. They're, they're just in the corner and they're really good blockers and it's really hard to kind of open something up to, to try and get that hit. So. Yeah, so almost like a sacrifice if Johansson knew that, for example, Jansby was looking to cover him across, could be worth it to yeah. risk the sacrifice in order to open things up a bit. Like a more fluid chess match. 
Sweden's throws going a little high on that last attempt. Yeah, it really doesn't matter like how many players you have on the court when you win the set, as long as you win the set. So it yep. doesn't matter if you win with one player on the court or six. So sometimes when you've got that uh, really big discrepancy, it's okay to to go for something really risky if it's going to open up. Okay, and now Switzerland went for something a little bit risky with that preemptive shot. Sweden takes their time, resets. They've got four balls to make a play with now. And they get two on target. Very good survivability from Switzerland. Pressure's on them, and they're, they're handling it really well. Yeah, no panic in their play right now. Although that third ball maybe putting... I jinxed it. <laughs> it's a commentator's curse. Is that what they call it? They, they call it that. <laughs> I wish I had those powers. <laughs> Yeah, Matthias Jenny trying to create something in that moment got stuck out up high and Sweden able to convert. Seven and a half minutes to go yet in the first half. How do you feel about these 40-minute uh, long matches? I love it. Yeah, um, a lot of time for things to develop. Yeah, I, I'm definitely someone that like loves the long game. Uh, so at some tournaments, uh, when you sort of have those 20 minute round robin matches. I feel like I'm only just getting <laughs> into it, to be honest, by the time that the 20 minute mark ends. Uh, so yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah. Especially when we've got such a big bench. Yes. Uh, we can definitely inject fresh legs whenever we need to. Yeah, and somehow everybody's surviving off that rush. And yeah, I think you're seeing that trend toward bigger and bigger benches from a lot of uh, the foam teams for exactly that reason. Christine Lynn trying a long-range counter toward a bit of a bunch up, but it's always one of the challenges when you still have six on the court. It's hard to find room to dodge sometimes. Yes, I've definitely uh, landed on top of a few of my teammates. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. We all understand the, uh, the assignment as long as uh, we just get out of the way. <laughs> dodge is a dodge. <laughs> That's right. And we've been everybody, got everybody still dodging well here. Six on six. Oh, but there's a disarm of Carlson. Someone getting some chalk. <laughs> that might be literally what he's doing right yeah. now. Fact on the side, <laughs> yep. Oh, there's a good connection as well. That was a great fake from, uh, I think it was number 56, uh, just to set up that dodge. And then uh, I really opened up the shot for uh, number four. Yeah, the really showing the importance is our first of why you commit to those fakes. You really sell it. Make sure that the opponent believes that could be coming out of your hand right at him. It is five on five now. Good block by our first, getting low. Getting the ball out oh, in front. Great, great integrity. Okay, yep. There. Calling himself off. From up here, love I, th to see that. I thought it looked good, but I, exactly. I love to see when players... They want to win honestly. It doesn't feel great to cheat your way to a win, I assume. I tried never to do that. None of that. None of that here. Okay, so Switzerland able to get that ball into the hands of the far corner before the play erupts, so that's good. A little more defensive tool. We're going to get to go on the offensive now. Three balls in hand for Sweden on defense. A lot of some of the target, but scampers out of the way and now defensive call being made by Switzerland. Also something you don't always see the newer home teams do. Apparently that call was I am throwing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a lot more uh, pre-throws this year. A lot of from again a very uh, cloth uh, thing I would say. So it's something that has caught us off guard a little bit uh, when we played Austria. Yeah. Uh, just the amount of pre-throws coming in even with home because uh, it, it does reset the count so it's something that is a little bit more of a risk in foam compared to cloth, where uh, yeah. if you throw in defensively, the, the count still happens. And I, I've heard discussion, I don't know if it's it's a rule change being considered, but there's there has been talk at times about the uh, defensive throw not resetting the 10 second count in foam as well as a yes. option. Yeah, I, I've heard that, that rumor as well. <laughs> we will not I like the rules the way that they are. <laughs> Plenty of opinions out there on many different rules topics, but okay, good counter from Lim again, taking out Hillet. Uh, Augustine Lim, who actually was playing in Toronto, Ontario, Canada for a couple of years, now makes his home in Stockholm. Oh, great shot. Yeah, just uh, doing some work against this Swiss ride as Doshi is taken out. 
But they still have two out there. That's enough to take a point. I'd like to maybe see Switzerland uh, try at the start just to send that one ball over um, rather than the double. Um, just to just to kind of settle into the point and not put too much pressure on themselves on like the next exchange right. like we spoke about before. Um, you know, it, it seems like a good idea to throw, to throw two, uh, but then you've got another two coming back at you instead of a one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see them just mix it up, maybe just send one over, give themselves a bit more cover. Okay, well they're Again. able to make it work. <laughs> they proved me wrong. <laughs> But I know what you mean. Sometimes it, it is a, obviously a more likely to be effective shot when you're throwing two on target, but sometimes keeping the extra tool on defense gives you more options on the next sequence or lets you slow things down and maybe, as we were saying, build that defensive confidence, disrupt the pace of the opponents a little bit if they can't throw as many. Good dodge by Lottiston. But again, they're only, they're only sending one back in that exchange, so potentially uh, Sweden can just soak the, those two balls and come up and make a play with the four, um, and potentially throw two and guarantee that hit. Yeah. Certainly at this level, an awful lot of the throwers are capable by themselves, but there's a two-ball attack again. Really, it is working for Switzerland, so. Maybe that's something I need to uh, take note of that's for our games. <laughs> Maybe I've been doing it wrong. Yeah, I think this is a style and strengths, and as you said before, like what is your win condition? If you think your best shot is those those two shots at once, you feel confident with that teammate at being able to line up a target appropriately. Okay, there they go for the cross. I always kind of like that Xing across, like right corner throws at the left, left corner throws at the right. It, it's something that we, it's not really called, or not really done in Australia, so I have to kind of remember when I come and play these international tournaments to, to keep looking out yep. for that cross. And I think we see a timeout. So those Swiss players are going to get a well-deserved break. They've been holding Maybe out. Maybe chalk up if their hands are getting yeah. a sweaty. <laughs> That's right. And they're going to have a little conversation with their teammates, but I'm, I'm sure the main thing is to replenish that stamina bar for the two players who've still been out there for a while. Yeah, particularly when it's a very pivotal set, um, and especially here we've got a minute and a half left in the first half. Um, you've got a timeout to use per half. Uh, yeah, definitely a good idea to, to call it, give those players a bit of a break. They've done really well to get that 4v2 down to a 2v2. Yeah. Do you ever feel like if you realize your team didn't use a timeout in the first half, and then the other team calls one, and you think, oh, we, we actually really could have used those? Yeah, I think um, it's something that we've spoken about a lot on our side, um, and just sort of like giving everyone the confidence to like ask for it if they need it. So right. um, I felt like we, we've, that's something we've done really well this tournament is like using the tools available to us, um, whether it be a timeout or a sub. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Because they don't always come up, I think it's easy to forget about those things. And you want to remember, like if it if it's an important tool that you have available to yourself, it might be worth being a little more liberal with its usage. Yes. A lot of enthusiastic fandoms here at World. You love to see it or hear it or feel it sometimes. It's one of my favorite parts, actually. It's like the, the crowds and, and playing, particularly as the tournament progresses, and um, especially in the knockout games. Uh, the, the crowds can really get either team like, across the line. And the refs have stopped the clock. They're coming to the middle. We've got some Team Italy members helping out as court refs. Down there with Canadian ref Case Chandler. This is always where occasionally we've been able to have somebody mic'd up down there and be, we, be, we may be able to find out what gets talked about, but yeah, it looks like Lottison is out. But of course, what I don't know is why. His head shake suggests that he doesn't agree with the call, but... It might have been a line call, potentially. And that is obviously one of the biggest reasons we have these, these refs at the back, keeping an eye on the line. As a player, obviously it can be hard when you're backpedaling or scrambling around in the court to keep track of the lines, but I mean, if we're going to have the lines, we kind of have to enforce them, right? Exactly. Otherwise, everybody's going to be just running everywhere, chasing the golden snitch or 
I don't know if this is a, uh, a thing that other teams do, but we, as a bit of a, a joke on our, our team, we sort of have like a, a fine if you step on the line. Right. <laughs> we sort of keep track of how many people are line outing, and it's just a. Yeah. Be prepared to have a few jokes at your expense if you go out for a line. <laughs> Extra conditioning yeah. on the topic. <laughs> well, yeah. Coach killers, we call them. <laughs> I don't know if that's a saying uh, outside yeah. of Australia. Yep, we've uh, we've heard that before. Lines B. Great movement there. Yeah, he's keeping the blockers out in front of him and moving laterally. It's a good defensive choice. Now he's going to try and solo throw. That one kind of splitting his targets. Switzerland just sending one. Right, we'll see if they get those double shots on Jansby. Obviously, that's a huge part of why Switzerland's been able to get this back to a much more winnable scenario than it was a few minutes ago. Jansby reacts well. OK, we get right to that no blocking call. I always love seeing the flurry right at the end. And sometimes if I'm not looking at the clock, I'm just like, why is it so chaotic all of a second? Then you see the, the yeah. ref whistle happen, and you're like, right, right. I've definitely been a victim of that as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm seeing Sweden call for a timeout as well. So they're going to take a little bit of extra time. Maybe give Jansby a breather this time. I feel like it's hard to appreciate just how exhausting it can be to be the last one on the court, or the two on the court facing more opponents. Just given how much you have to commit to your movements if you want to stay alive and keep in it for your team, you're throwing over and over because there's no one else to do it, your conditioning gets strained. Yes, uh, definitely had a few girls make the same comment uh, when they've been last left in. Uh, yeah, after it's like a really long 1v1 or I think uh, even, I think it was Gigi closed out a 3v1 and immediately just asked for that sub just yeah. to uh, catch her breath because yeah, it's, it's, it's exhausting. But it's, it's great to see that players are still giving their 100% um, yeah. until the end of the set. And as you were saying before, those timeouts are one of the tools to make sure that players can still give that 100%. We're getting some stomp stomp clap out there from people in the arena and on the sidelines. Oh, oh, that's a back line, line, I think. Yep, yep. Oh, no. Yeah, you can see the, sw the Swedish sideline saw it as well. Unlucky. So Switzerland bringing back a tough point at the end of the first half. It was a great, great fight back. <laughs> Some celebration directed back up toward the stands <laughs> from the Swiss players. I can appreciate why. Uh, both teams have earned a well-deserved uh, five-minute half-time break. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm curious if... I, I think this is different for every team, whether they approach subs as uh, doing a rotation of players sometimes or uh, trying to keep a unit on the court together to keep building that chemistry with each other. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, I think, and this is where... There's not just strategy for on court and for each set. There's a strategy to how to approach the tournament of as course. well. Um, so I think every game and every team will have a different, I guess, objective and what they want to achieve and whether that's uh, testing out a new combination or, or trying a, a, how a particular style of play works or whether it's just an even rotation to, to keep legs fresh. Um, I would assume that every team is coming into this, each game, with maybe a different idea of what they want to achieve in the round robins in the pool matches. Yeah, and I think for some of these teams that maybe they have ideas that they haven't been able to test out all the way in practice. Um, so they may use some matches where, let's say, the score is out of reach in some fashion. Like, let's try these out in a game situation. And sometimes you can have uh, just player combinations that maybe we're working during practice and now whatever for whatever reason it's not working once you get into game matches so might have to adjust on the fly pick out a different approach yeah I, i'm definitely a fan of not putting all of your eggs in one basket um and just sort of trusting like a, the same six six players for the entire time i think it's really important to get every single player on that bench uh on the court and feeling ready because you know, especially when it comes to knockout games, when the stakes are a lot higher, um, anything can happen. And yep. players who you think may, um, you know, they, they may just perform so much at a higher level than they previously have, and they just thrive on that. 
that pressure and maybe uh, someone who you thought might be a key player just isn't feeling it that day. And it's nice to have, have options uh, rather than just relying on the same six players to get you through to the end. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense just because even if it does work really well, it is risky. As you said, if one of those players gets stuck in a long one-on-four or something like that, then it can be disruptive if you've been relying on the same six and now that one player needs the time off. Yeah. So I know a lot of teams will do like units of two players or three players and try to have uh, like a really cohesive understanding between those pairs or those trios and then maybe mix and match those groups instead. Yeah, I uh, hadn't sort of thought of it that way, but I think that that way makes a lot of sense because um, it's also hard sometimes when you, you switch out like large portions of the team like in the space of one set and any momentum that you've kind of built is kind of lost yes. uh, when you're making sort of too many changes at a time. Um, so yeah, keep, keeping sort of groups of players together I think is a really smart way to approach it. Yeah, but at the same time, I think one of the trade-offs is some teams play really fluidly and you'll see the same six players end up in all the different six positions on the court in the same point. That's harder to do, I think, if you're used to playing in a unit and maybe within the unit you're used to swapping but not... Like, let's say if it's a left side unit and right side, yeah. Side. So I think there's still a lot of room for teams and players to have uh, different styles on this kind of thing. There's no standard right way to do it. Maybe there never will be. See the chop getting used to help keep the grips. It is important for this tournament course. I think the chalk has become the standard for just making sure you can keep the grip on those balls. Yes, we. Uh, everyone on our bench has a, a designated uh, chalk ready to go um, at the end of every set. You've got 30 seconds to get your water in, get a towel, yep. get your chalk. And even more important in the heat than it is normally. So. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't had a chance to see the uh, Team Australia women yet on this court, so hoping that happens sometime in the future. I haven't looked ahead in the schedule enough to know if it does happen. Yeah, I think you're asking the wrong person. Yeah. I, I, just, <laughs> I just get told a number about five minutes before the game. <laughs> I'm actually similar. When I'm a player, uh, if I'm not the captain, then I'm just like, just tell me where to be next. That is what I know, and that's all I know. Yeah, and I think it's really important as well as a player like you've got a job to do, there's coaches with a job to do, there's a team manager with a job to do, like, particularly, like, if you're a newer player as well, like, just being able to just focus on getting on the court and playing, and just know that, that your support team has the rest covered, like, yeah. they'll organise, you know, the rosters, they'll organise, making sure everyone's in the right spot at the right time, because um, I think it can be quite overwhelming on your first time, yeah. there's a lot happening, there's people everywhere, and just that ability to really just focus on what your job is is really important. And obviously it's easy to put a lot of pressure on yourself, it's a, especially if you're a first-time player in your national team. So I, I get what you're saying. Like, let the players focus on the things that they have to do. Yes. Let the rest be done by other people who are here to do it. And that's probably the best way for things to move smoothly. Yeah. We've been really fortunate on Team Australia. Like, we've always had some um, players that have... Uh, got some experience at the world tournament and we've made a really big emphasis on like you know if you if you've played worlds before share your knowledge share your learning share your experience with the, the players that are here for the first time yeah, we see that come through pretty often those longtime players sometimes who are now in coaching roles on some other teams Ooh, nice Great catch, catch. Raph, Ooh, exactly saw that how one. you want to start a yeah. first set of a second half <laughs> Switzerland wants to continue that momentum. Okay, they get another good shot right away. Sweden's going to want to stop the bleeding a bit, of course. They'll get an extra ball to do it now. Joshi looking at his hands and look, the friendly rollback. <laughs> a lot of Sims throw, skips into the middle. And we'll see if Switzerland can keep connecting on those hits. No, not quite. Come close. Oh. That was beautiful. <laughs> Such a hard place to dodge if a quick shot comes in on your ankles like that. Oh, it, it, it's a killer. Well, I think uh, one of the best players with that kind of shot is Nico from Team Oz. Uh, I play against him a lot in Melbourne, and it's, uh, it's deadly. Yeah. 
And uh, Sam Holcomb as well. That's a bit of her specialty. She's always good at those two shots. Yeah, it's a great place to aim. Nobody's going to catch that, barring a fluky uh, ricochet. So. Great free throw. Yeah, our first taken out. Playing Yoshi with a lot countered. more confidence, and it's really paying off for them. Yeah, I, I feel like it's grown as this match has gone on. And, I mean, that's what you want. You can build on those successes you're seeing. And some good shots coming back, though. Sweden far from out of it. Good movement from their defensive players. Gladysson's been doing a great job of moving around on defense a lot. Drawing out another ball this time. Now Simon Joseph, he lets it go. He's gonna have less to work with, just one now, and you see, yep, Switzerland attacking that solo ball carrier. It is often the play, just make sure that they don't have the defensive tool in play to deal with uh, whatever you're trying to do. Ooh, lot of some, almost a no look block there, but doing, doing the right thing, folding up behind the ball, keeping it out in front. Okay, they connect, Sweden fighting back in this one. David Hummel, the last Swiss player remaining, goes offensive and has the luxury of another ball coming in from the sideline. And Sweden, yeah, finishes it off, Lottiston. Strong response from, uh, from Sweden. It's okay, both teams having some strong moments in that point after the second half starts. Nice and close, that's always how we appreciate seeing the matches be. I've seen so many close matches in the pool games at yeah. uh, this world, and honestly, yeah, it's, been, it's been great. Definitely exciting to watch when they're close like this. Feels like a lot of these teams are pretty well matched for each other. Let's see what kind of rush play we get from these two teams. Between their touch quicker. Okay, but Switzerland does get a throw off quickly themselves, and they're getting out. It's obviously hard sometimes. Even if you get to the ball more quickly, you've got to pitch it back. And then we did get a referee whistle. Although for what? I know they're returning the two balls that were thrown right after the whistle. Yeah, just back to your point on the rush. It's, uh, it's great to be the first ones to the ball, but sometimes, like, uh, even if you're a little bit slower, if you can get that pass back quickly and get that good synergy with that person who's receiving the ball, um, and if they have a quick release. Um, so it's not always just about the speed to the ball. There's sort of the three aspects of that rush. Like the run, the pass, and then the shot. I know when I've received that pass back from teammates before, the ones who can get it to you at the height where you don't have to adjust too much, it's so valuable and so appreciated. Exactly. Um, we, we definitely sort of pair people up for the rush. Um, and, you know, every now and then at our training sessions, we'll just have a bit of time just to, to practice and have those conversations about timing and placement. That makes a big difference if your attacker can get that ball away in a hurry, hopefully before the other team has a chance to set up on defense or get their own throw off. And oh, what a catch. great catch. Oh, <laughs> what a victimization, though, right afterward. I mean, yeah. I still appreciate Hamel celebrating the catch. It was a nice backing up, kind of securing it off the body a little bit. But Oh, and there's a double. double. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't know how you can respond any better to that than what yeah. they did. <laughs> Carlson went hand skyward because what is he going to do? But that is the way the ball bounces sometimes. Good pressure up on that ball, protecting that space. Yeah, because that is a Team Sweden ball at the moment. I think it's a little too far for the Swiss players to reach. It would be great to see uh, Switzerland try and hold that space a little bit more exactly. and prevent them from getting that because it's uh, always so frustrating when that ball is on your side but out of reach. Exactly. It still counts as part of your possession, which might matter in terms of whose throw it is, and then you might have to spend a ball or two just Even to earn it back. Even throw down to one in hand. It's, yep. it's a very frustrating situation. Draft taken out, three on three. I know in my league play, sometimes I'm urging players, I know you can reach that ball over but the line. Don't. Leave it. <laughs> They're it's like, so why? 
Ooh, that was close. But I think it hit the ground first. Dosey wow. taken out. Position was good. Thought was good. Yeah, if you have no ball in hand, I mean, that's one of the options. Just stay low, stay square, force the throw right on you. Okay, that's looked a little awkward. Maybe wishing for elbow pads at the moment, <laughs> but Joseph, he seems fine. I'm so envious of how some players can just get so small. Yeah, that is not part of my skill set. No, not mine either. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you have the catching to uh, fall back on, too. Ooh, nice shot. Sweden responding again, there. yeah. Joseph, he's going to have to do it alone now, facing three from Sweden. Oh, tricky. I didn't think, yeah, you see the appreciative <laughs> clap. Sweden recognizing that that was a pretty good move. And again, got that outside shot, but now Sweden's going to set up. Okay, they just take one, trying to keep him off the ball. Sometimes the dynamic when there's two players in versus one, um, even like when you're last looking, there's less players, but sometimes it can be a bit of an advantage because you don't have to worry about like covering a teammate or kind of um, like thinking about what they're going to do as well. Yep. Uh, and you can just kind of uh, think about yourself and just play the way that you can with your strengths. Um, so yeah, we always are a big sort of fan if you're last locked in, like we're not going to tell you guys what to do. Like you know how you can win this set. Yeah. Um, and you've got the whole court space. You don't have to worry about anyone else. The whole team's behind you. So uh, definitely a lot of value. Um, okay, set is certain, certainly never over uh, when there's one player in. Yeah, I feel like just about every player on these rosters is a fully capable solo player out right there. Yes. And to your point, it does simplify the game when all you have to worry about is what's on the other side of the court. That was a great shot spot on the ball retriever in the side, but we've seen Joseph be able to throw that ball off body to his right. Okay, and then he goes across court a bit. He's got that flick motion yeah. low to the ground. Timeout called, Switzerland. Yeah, Joseph e, an acknowledging thank you over to the sideline. I was actually going to think if they were going to call, and uh, certainly might be a good moment too, so it's good that they've recognized that. I think Let him chalk up a bit. Yes, and he's done such a good job on defense too, of yeah. sliding around, getting really small. His movement is great. And I, but I'm sure it is taking a toll on his, on his uh, breath right now. But again, yeah, particularly if uh, he finds himself uh, on the defense, like preferring to dodge, that means that if he's going to win, he has to hit them. So yes. he needs to be able to have a good grip on the ball and uh, be able to take those shots nice and accurately. And we've seen him, uh, rather than taking big wind-ups, he's got that kind of low wrist flick. He's been able to get pretty decent power off of it, too. So that might actually be helpful if you have to throw over and over. Correct, yeah. And, and it helps you get a little bit more, um, like, the angle on the ball. Yep. It's a little bit harder to read sometimes, and it means you can sort of throw across your body a little bit more easily without uh, having to turn your whole body to the other side of the court. Uh, the different ways to throw no looks or, or off-body kind of throws. There's some where you'll try to plant your feet and point your whole body at the last moment. There's some where you'll accept a loss of power a little bit, I think, but you'll try to fully disguise it. Um, I don't know, I'm always no a big fan, like, um, again, like you said, sacrificing a bit of power, but just being able to keep your hips nice and square so that if, you know, that ball does come in, um, you're in the best position to, to see it and even catch it. Yep. Um, Leaving yourself in a good spot after you throw yeah. is always important. Okay, that one's coming close. Our first tries the return shot. Still one on three here. Good fakes from uh, Sweden. Just disguising who's throwing. And using almost that full 10 seconds too. There's no reason not to sometimes, so. Ooh. Great timing on that shot. Yeah, I like what our first is trying to do. This is Joseph at his most exposed. He's coming all the way up to the center line, so. Worth taking a few of those, certainly. Josephie hoping to just maybe suppress that this time. A nice shot right on the money, but well blocked again. Switzerland looking very calm, composed, and confident as well, and that's what you need when you're last left in. Oh, 
I really feel like he's controlling the pace of this set as well, which is, is hard to do when you're the one, but it's, uh, it's a great advantage when you're controlling how quickly exchange is happening. That's right. It does feel like he's kind of setting the tempo a bit more than his opponents. Hopefully he can keep it up. He's looking a little tired for some reason. But still Wouldn't great movement. Why. <laughs> yeah. And still with a Amazing. great block. Those blocks are hard to make, so. Full marks, another block, pushes it away. Sweden's going to get to attack again, though. His reactions are incredible. Harper's comes up. Sweden's going to try and set up. And I think, yeah, you've got four balls from Sweden now. Maybe throw from both wings. Try to make the defense as hard as possible. It wasn't the wings, but it was two coming in. And sort of at this point, when you're the one, you have to start thinking about how much do I have left in the tank and do I need to up the risk a little bit? Because um, obviously it's hard when there's, there's three people. You're working a lot harder as the one. Ah, okay. lucky. Big effort from Simone Josephy, but Sweden finally takes it down. They use that numbers advantage. But as you we were saying, as it goes longer, if, you're, if you notice that your ability to execute on your best aspects is fading, yeah, maybe you have to force some of those one-for-one -one moments that give you a better chance to take someone out. More Might risk be a 50-50, but if that's, that's all you can do in the moment, then uh, definitely worth it. Or we see a lot of players, and I'm sure this might be you sometimes, drop the balls at the last second, just try to force the catch if need be. It's like you've seen me play before. <laughs> <laughs> Very worthwhile to bring back help sometimes, but now the full help is out there, six on six. Josephy getting a well-deserved break on the bench. Sweden keeping a similar lineup out there. Got a little under eight and a half to go in the match. That ball popping up, okay. It is Sweden's match right now, but still lots of time for Switzerland to close the gap. That's a nice hit from Sweden, though. It'll be interesting to see how um, Switzerland played this last eight minutes. Um, are they going to use this as a time just to really try and solidify and play their game and get it uh, working really well? Or are they going to push for that win, try and open up, speed up the game a little bit and see if they can claw back those uh, two points in the eight minutes? Yeah, because to one of the things you said earlier, it's a long tournament and there may be value in thinking long term. Ooh, two hits there. Sweden cashing in now. But we talk sometimes about the, the importance of morale and the habits and uh, team play that are that still matter no matter what the score is. Hey, okay, one for one now, taken by Sweden, which I'm sure they're happy with, because now again, one Swiss player left facing quite a few Swedes. I think Switzerland have really, over the course of this game, really nailed their timing, particularly from those counter shots from the wings. Um, they're able to read Switzerland a little bit easier, I think, now. Um, so those wings are ready to take those shots because they know when the ball is and isn't coming at them. I agree. I, th I think that seems like a little adjustment they've been able to make, and Switzerland hasn't had an equivalent adjustment. So, But I liked Hamill there as the last player. Look for that catch right away. And I think you're facing five. I mean, I think that's yeah. a very reasonable choice. And he's also taken a couple of catches this game as well, so that maybe is one of his strengths. And again, if he knows his wing condition, that, that's, that's a really big advantage as a player. Mm. That is a slightly painful double. Off one rusher and into the mouth of the other. But left with five balls. So see if they can uh, even the numbers out. Not quite. Jansby gets low. I know whenever you have five balls, you really want to cash in for at least one elimination. I'm greedy. I like to take two when I can. <laughs> <laughs> that ball popping way up off the block, but not far enough off the court to be anything other than a catch. Okay, well-timed shot. Great counter. Again, just breaking up their synergy a little bit. It's a good shot. And didn't eat a counter of his own, so... Well, this time he is targeted as is his opposite corner, so Hamel's going to be alone out there. Let's see if he looks catch again. He's got four balls. Sweden 
Threatening. Great okay. shot. Nice throw right into the middle. Amal takes another proactive shot. Has another ball come in from the back. Nope, from the side. Hopefully that hit uh, at the start there gives him a bit of confidence. Looking for that catch. Okay. And he, he one drop ball does roll back Sweden's way, but Hamel has two available to him, but he's not taking that second ball in from the side. I think he'll look catch then. Yep, throw and then catch and then <laughs> try not to fall back. Coming in with a very clear strategy here. And again, might be just knowing his win conditions, knowing his strengths as a player. He's obviously confident throwing that initial ball a, a moment before he expects the incoming shots. So and looking for the right ball to catch as well. Yes, not forcing it too much. But I think Sweden has a chance to bait that throw out of him then. Yes. No, you can see the, the player without a ball at the back for Sweden just kind of shadowing a little bit, just looking for a, a stray ball. Yeah, that's one of those things we talk about. You may not have a ball or a specific thing to do on the court, but you can still try and find the right position for those shadow catches, as you say, or where you think the deflections are most likely to end up. Okay, Sweden can't quite hit him. Hamel daring them to throw another one in before he picks up his ball. Ooh. Oh, that time, Bad finally. Luck. That was the right one. Right yep. one to go for. But Jansky got it on the body with enough power to secure that point for Sweden. We've got a little under four minutes, and I think that's five to two for Sweden now. It's definitely doable if they are willing to really just uh, up the ante a little bit. Well, and we saw Sweden start that point with a double off the rush. I mean, if you get a bounce like that, then you can maybe keep pushing the pace. You can get that to cascade a bit into a, a quick point. What's the, the fastest set you've seen? I think mine, my record is that I've seen that 25 seconds. <laughs> Well, that, ooh, nice catch backing up by Onsby. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure at Worlds, like in league play, <laughs> sloppy <laughs> stuff happens all the time. Uh, but I wonder what the fastest set at Worlds is. We need some sort of historian. Yeah, someone, do we have a fact checker here? <laughs> is that in the budget? Switzerland getting a hit. They push Palmer off the court. 